I've been talking about stocks that you might be selling, which is going to lead me to sector spotlight because I want to hit on banks. We had the XLF, the financial ETF, up more than 2% on Wednesday. It was really led by Bank of America settling with mortgage-backed security investors for about $8.5 billion. You know what? Markets like a plan. Yes. But I have to wonder if investors should actually be selling into this bank rally because in terms of Bank of America, it ain't over. They're going to have to settle with or repurchase more mortgages from Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and also big banks like Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, perhaps have large exposure to Europe. It's not transparent, so we don't know for sure, but it's a pretty good likelihood. So I know you were cautious on selling Bank of America yesterday. Have you changed your tune? I am long a little Bank of America. I'm okay. long, I think, a little Wells Fargo and J.P. Morgan. I bought some yesterday on that gap up. Some of them, you actually could have made money during the day. They, they gapped up, they held, and they followed through for a cash flow trade, and they do have some room before they get into bigger resistance okay. areas. Goldman was actually the best one that opened up and then stayed and, and followed through. And these things have a little bit more room before you have to worry about bigger resistance and worry about whether or not this can be sustained. And let's get into some of those areas right now. And then worry about whether or not you want to sell to get some profits. Well, interesting that you mentioned J.P. Morgan because since it bought Washington Mutual, it most likely will also have to settle mortgage claims. So if it behaves like Bank of America, that could be a catalyst, which is kind of ironic. Spend more money and then, and, and then get a pop, right? So can we check out the chart of, of J.P. Morgan and find out what their sure. resistance is? I, I looked at this chart yesterday, and I actually liked it a li a li even a little bit better. I talk about descending trend lines or descending channels, and typically they break to the upside. So here is your first little move, and now we're knocking on this door. Mm -hmm. I think you could add to this above 40.56, and then this also can get to the moving averages and have a nice little rally back to 42, 42.50 if they want to keep this bank move going, and they probably can from these lower levels. And then Wells Fargo, you know, bought uh, Wachovia up 2% yesterday, same kind of deal as J.P. Morgan and Bank of America will probably at some point have to settle some of these mortgage claims. Uh, Link, can we look at the chart and see if it can get to its moving averages? Let's take a look. Wells Fargo also. Uh, this one I drew yesterday. This was that pivot low when uh -huh. it overthrew, came back up. It's been trying to go higher. It crossed this descending trend line, which typically is good. So if it could move sideways and hold above it, which we talk about commitment to the move, it could have a move back to these moving averages around 29. So this one looks you know, decent technically as well. And then Citigroup, the sort of stock that people love to invest in and trade, right? Am I getting that right? So got an upgrade from Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Um, what about the stock? This I avoided, and I continue to avoid this also. Traded above the lower pivot. I would have rather you entered if you did around 39.50. It's a 41.50. Took back one moving average. I think it has some room, but it's not that compelling. 44 is going to be a brick wall of resistance. But it's so, not a compelling short or anything like no, that either. Not yet. It's okay. not. It's not like extended where yeah. you could short it, but it's not. Hasn't had such a big move. We have to rush to sell it. But I don't think you need to be in like three or four of these, being like one or two, you don't need that much exposure. And I'm not exactly sure what I have long right now on my virtual trading floor, so I don't want to get in trouble <laughs> compliance with but I know I have a few of the banks. And uh, I'm going to see if they can be sustained today. Well, let's move on to a semi-bank. We're going to go to the credit card companies. We heard late Wednesday that the Fed's going to recommend that the cap on the debit card swipe fees be raised to 21 cents from 12 cents, plus a five basis point multiplied by the value of the transaction. That's like 0.05%. Good news. Yes. A huge rally. Huge. You know, up 11 percent. They were actually halted because the move was so big. The rule is going to go into effect in October 2011. So the day after, how do you trade the MasterCards and the Visas of the world? You know, we've talked about them a lot as sort of a non-bank bank. Right. This was something we talked about as investments for individuals that want to mm -hmm. hold something longer term. And if they did, they got rewarded with that massive news yesterday and that massive move in the stock. Traders did have some success with it, but there were also a lot of guys that thought it went a little too far, started shorting it uh -huh. you know, during the move, and they got hurt. So right now, it's a time to let it figure out if they could sustain it. I think this morning there was an upgrade on Visa, mm -hmm. saying tech, you know, tactically buy it, but don't buy it up here. Wait for a little bit of a pull-in. And on MasterCard, they said don't rush to buy it. And rightly so. If you look at these, you know, these moves, look at this Visa. Visa, you know, it, it cleared this little uh, descending you know, ch channel, which would have been just a trade above 76, but no one would have thought 10 points. It also cleared a macro level here. So if you take a look at this chart from a macro stance, this was big resistance, and it blew through. So what I'd like to see is I'd like to see it hold the top third of this move. You know, maybe it holds this 84 area, builds a nice little flag, and if you're not in it, you buy into this area, and then you trade it as it makes new highs. But it must hold this 82 in order to be valid, which is 50% of this exciting move. But on a day like today, I would not be just buying it. Some traders might try and short it because they think it was a, a little overdone. 
you have to be careful here because these are the type of moves that puts traders out of business if you get stubborn. So if you're an investor and you had it during the whole time period, congrats. You know, if you're a trader, be a little cautious. Trade versus levels. Don't cost average into shorts and don't cost average into longs because this range is big. Now, 